Okay, so yes, as you can see, my ears are slowly invading the rest of my face. Or I had a haircut. So first, I wanted to thank everybody who wished me a happy birthday yesterday, because indeed it was my birthday. And as many of you may already know, I just turned 25. And, well, as expected, I feel very young. So, uh, without any further ado, let's jump right in. A couple months ago, Intel released its new X series uh, processors. And with it, the new X299 chipset, which goes along. And of course, Asus went ahead and released five X299 motherboards. And today, I have the pleasure to review the Prime X299A. Um, the entry level of those five motherboards. Now, I know what you're thinking. An entry level, is it any good? Well, do not worry one bit. This thing is packed with yumminess. I should just take it down a notch, shouldn't I? So here we have a motherboard in its static bag. We're gonna put this aside for now. So here we have our M.2 Solid State Drive Vertical Mount, our I.O. Shield, our SLI Bridge, our Front Panel Bridge Connector, our M.2 Solid State Drive Screw and Screw Razor, a couple of SATA cables, our drivers, a quick start guide, and our manual. So not much on the accessory side. But let's take a closer look to the motherboard. First in line, the CPU socket. This is a 2066 pin CPU socket, and that replaced the older 2011 version 3 that we had. It's good and bad news. The bad news is you cannot use 2011 compliant CPUs, so exit with a Broadwell E and everything before that. This is not backward compatible. The only thing we can use with this motherboard are the new X-Series CPUs. On the upside, we have 55 more pins, and that means a greater bandwidth transfer between the CPU and the motherboard and a lower voltage per core. So that's very cool. RAM-wise, as you can tell, we have a quad-channel configuration. But it's not that simple. Depending on the type of processor you're gonna use, you will be able to activate the four channels or only two. Yes, you heard that right. If you take uh, any quad-core processors, uh, you will be stuck with a dual channel configuration, running up to 64 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM, up to 4133 megahertz. But if you run any other X-Class CPUs, then it will unlock the two remaining channels and you'll be able to run up to 128 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM, also clockable up to 4133 megahertz. In a nutshell, what makes the X299 chipset an upgrade compared to the older X99 chipset is its bandwidth. The X99 would only have eight PCI lanes second generations, and our new X299 has an impressive 24 third generation PCI Express lanes. And that's about four and a half to five times more bandwidth for our gaming and entertainment pleasure. On our motherboard, that translates in greater speeds and more bus availability on our PCI Express lanes. As you can tell, we have six of them, three 16 slots, two four slots and one single slot. In this particular case, if you're running a single GPU, it doesn't matter if you put it on the first or the second PCI Express. They can both run up to 16 speed. If you have two GPU, you can run both GPUs in an SLI or Crossfire configuration, individually running at a full 16 bus speed. But it doesn't stop there. This motherboard can take three-way SLI or Crossfire configuration. So if you had a third GPU, then you could put it in the last 16 slot PCI Express. And in this case, you would have a 16 by 16 by eight bus speed, which is extremely impressive. All right, let's take a look at our storage. As on any good motherboard, you'll have eight third generation SATA plugs, which can all individually transfer up to six gigabit of data. But where things get really interesting is because we have so many more PCI lanes to play with, we can have 
2 M.2 solid state drive running individually up to 4 bus speed. One will find itself in a vertical position and the other one in an horizontal position. As in Z270 chipset motherboards, the X299 chipset comes Opten ready. And that means that our M.2 solid state drive can transfer data up to an astonishing 32 gigabit per second. Well, in principle at least. Another evolution. On the other side of our chipset heat shield, we have a M.2 solid state drive thermopad. This should really help us keep this stick a little cooler than usual and allow it to reach those 30 plus gigabit per second. So pretty neat. Time to take a closer look to our peripherals. So starting from the left, we have our BIOS button, a couple of second generation USB plugs, a gigabit ethernet, four third generation USB plugs, one type A and one type C 3.1 10 gigabit graded USB plugs, our five audio channel, and finally an optical audio port. But that's not all. There is a couple of really cool features which usually are reserved for more expensive board which are here. I'll start with the QLED screen. So as you know, I am a big fan of QLED screens simply because they do simplify our lives. They will allow you uh, to easily troubleshoot your computer with the Q codes and monitor the current temperature of your CPU. Next to it, you have a soldered power button right on your board. And this is what really makes this motherboard an enthusiast graded motherboard. Again, it makes it easier to install, easier to test and easier to troubleshoot. Next on our list, the Aura Sync effect. If you've watched any of my reviews, you'll know that I'm a big fan of it. In a nutshell, Aura will sync all the different RGBs on the components in your build to glow in an harmonious way. So it looks really, really cool if you actually care on how cool your build will look like. That's... Oops. Anyway, you get my point. So on this particular case, we have an RGB strip hidden here and here. And if that's not enough, we also have two RGB connectors on each extremity of our board. Here and here. And last thing I'd like to show you is this little connector right here. This is a second generation USB 3.1 front panel connector and that's really cool because that will give you 10 gigabit per second transfer which is as much as the Thunderbolt 3.0 or the type A and type C we have on our peripherals and, and that's again something that I was not expecting to see on an entry level board. All right so I think I covered most of the technical aspect of this board but I kept the best for the end, the price. Uh, the Asus Prime X 299A um, costs about 310 US dollars and I'll say this, for one, it, it feels absolutely solid. This is a durable motherboard, it's not something cheap. But you can run a three-way GPU on this. You can have 16 by 16 by 8, I mean, you're talking about serious performances. Of course, you'll have to choose the right CPU to give you enough uh, PCI lanes to do the three-way GPU configuration. But, you know, motherboard-wise, you can't get any better than this. Not for $310. And that's why, for the very first time on my channel... Power cut! And this is why, for the very first time on my channel, I have decided to give it the Lawrence Choice Best Value Award 2017. Yeah, I give awards now. <laughs>